Hey friends, welcome to my channel Heidi Sambal DIY. Today we're going to be doing nine home decor ideas and I have this fall freebie for all of you to grab over on my website. This DIY is super simple and we're going to be using this fall freebie that has these beautiful sunflowers on it. We're going to use an old food can, a sunflower, and then a piece of foam. Start by cutting out the size of the printable that you would like. I'm going to use the smallest one since I'm using a small food can. You can also use these printables in a frame or in any other kind of project that you might want to. Add some E6000 to the corner since we're going to be putting this on a metal can. And then a little bit of hot glue around those edges just to make sure that it bonds quickly. I like to do both because this is going to add a nice bond since we're going to be putting it on metal. The hot glue itself would just pop right off. So I'm going to go ahead and rub that down and while that all locks into place, I'm going to get this piece of foam and go ahead and cut out a piece that is going to be down to the right size to fit into the can. Once I've got that cut out and I know that it fits, I'm going to go ahead and add on some E6000 to the bottom of my foam piece as well as some hot glue and then I'm going to just put that right back down in there and make sure it's nice and secure and glued to the bottom of the can. Now we're going to take this can and we are going to make it look really rustic. I'm going to just take some brown paint and I'm going to just tap all along the edges of that printable and I kind of go back and forth between the pressure of adding a thick amount of paint to a very light dry brush of the paint. This is really going to add that rustic look to it. Then I'm going to lock it all in with my heat gun. The can will heat up so be careful with touching the can when you're using a heat gun. And then I'm going to take my paint brush that I used earlier, get off a lot of the paint and now we're just going to dry brush on around the rest of the edges of that printable. Now it's time to start inserting your sunflower and I wanted to have a nice long stem like you would see out in the garden. I'm going to add a black and white gingham bow and then I'm going to just put that right where the leaves meet up on the stem. I thought that would be so darling. I don't know what it is about bows but they always just make me so happy on projects like this so I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and then put that right on the flower. I think it adds such a pretty feminine touch to it even though the can is all rusty. And then the last thing I'm going to add on is a little bit more hot glue. Add in some of this Spanish moss and tuck it down into the can. And at this point it is just such a darling home decor piece that costs almost nothing. This DIY is a little more labor intensive, but we are going to be making a wooden truck. Now trucks can cost so much money, but these are all the different sizes we're going to need of pieces of wood. I'm going to put all the measurements down below so you can grab that all. And then we are going to start by sanding down the edges of our blocks, making sure that there are no splinters on it. Once those are done, we're going to take the engine part of the truck, which is the longer piece and we're going to take the top part of the truck and we're going to find the center of those two blocks and drill down because we need to put a screw through them. So I'm going to go all the way down but my drill bit is not as big as these two blocks so I'm going to do all the way through one, it marks the second one and then I go through the rest without going through my table. Now I'm going to grab my countersink drill bit. I'm going to drill down because we want our screw head to be laying flat down in there and I'm going to screw those together. I forgot to show but I actually added just a little bit of wood glue in there because you can see as you're screwing it it'll want to turn a little bit like this and that's going to make sure over time when you're like really screwing it in it's going to lock in place. I just always like that extra wood glue in there because it really does add that extra lock. Now I'm going to take this longer piece and again all the measurements are down below. I'm going to glue that on with some wood glue 
And now I'm going to come in with some drywall nails and I'm just going to nail that into place to lock it down. Now I'm adding on the sides of the truck. I'm just adding on some wood glue and some hot glue to hold it in place. Once that's on, I will go ahead and flip it over and drill four holes, two on each side of the bed of the truck. And that's just to get it started so I can put a nail down in there and hammer those into place. And this is really gonna lock the whole thing together as one big truck. Now that we've got the body of the truck built, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of hot glue in these back corners. Again, an extra security just to make sure this is locked into place. And now I'm going to take my dowel rod and I'm gonna measure out the width of the truck and cut that down with these shear cutters. Sometimes you have to go around a couple times with these shear cutters. If you have arthritis at all, this is not the tool for you. But I do like this for these kind of cuts, just because you're able to get a quick cut without having to get out your miter box. Now I'm gonna need two of those for the front and the back axles of my truck. And I'm going to very slowly drill into that dowel on both ends and then I'm gonna find the center point of these wooden slices of tree branches. And I'm going to just put a little dot so I know where to drill. And then I'm going to put them down on a piece of block and drill into the middle of those. Now you can see down there in the left corner, I've already done one of my wheel axles. And it looks so cute when it's on the truck. I just think as it starts to come together with the wheels, it becomes so adorable so whimsical I love this part now I went ahead and drilled only enough so that the nail can get started and then I'm now going to hammer in the rest to really lock that all into place and I added a little bit of wood glue before to make sure it bonds and holds in now you want the tight to be nice and fit around your truck so I'm adding in a little bit of glue and then I'm going to roll back my wheel onto the truck and that glue will lock it all into place and it will be a nice fit. And there is our truck body. Can you believe that? I felt a little bit like I was working in Santa's workshop <laughs> as I was building this, like I was an elf. Now I'm gonna just patch those holes because these wood slices actually were originally ornaments in a box. I will link them down below the ones that I have and then at this point I can start painting. I decided to do a really pretty ice blue to go for that vintage fall truck look. I thought this looked so beautiful with this color. And then I went in and painted the wheels where they were brown, but I'm making sure you can still see the wood grain coming through because I wanted this to look really rustic. And at this point I'm just dry brushing on all over it. Now I'm gonna take one of these large tongue depressor sticks and I'm going to make one of the sides nice and flat and the other one I'm going to round it just like you would see on a window on a vintage looking truck. And then I'm gonna glue that down into place on the two side of the windows. I did one for the front of the window and the rear view window. And then over on the back, I'm taking popsicle sticks, cutting off the sides and adding those at the back of the truck bed. Now I'm gonna come back in with my white paint and I'm going to paint those windows white. And I don't show it, but one of my very last steps I did was is I came back in and dry brushed everything with white to really lighten and fade the color to make it look even more old and rustic. And then I went in with a little more brown paint, added it where I wanted it, making sure that it looked, again, old, rustic. I just think this is gonna be so cute on a shelf. And then one of the last steps, I ended up taking some white paint to add some lights to the front of the truck. And you get to play with how distressed you want this to be or not. And then at the very front, I'm gonna trim off the sides again to add a bumper to the truck.
For this DIY, we're going to be using some of this fabric, three pieces of wood cut down to size. I will put the measurements down below. Some of these branch wood slices and you could honestly just go out into your yard and find a thick branch after a storm and then some berry garland. Start by sanding your wood down to make sure there's no splinters anymore and then go ahead and give it two coats of white paint. Then I went into the top with my drill bit and I drilled out a hole and I'm going to do the same thing to my branches because we want to make sure they're not going to just pop off. I like things being locked in and put together properly so over time things don't just pop off because we've used hot glue. Now I'm going to be using hot glue but you could also use wood glue. But you're going to see how I drilled my holes in both of the ends. Now I'm taking a shish kebab stick. I'm going to cut that down and I'm going to pop that right in there to make sure it's the right length. Put on my topper branch for my cute little pumpkin I'm making here. And this is really going to allow it to hold so strongly together. And again, you could use wood glue with this, but I'm just using hot glue because it works really great as well. And then I push that right on top, and at this point you can go ahead and distress it. I'm going to take some of this gingham fabric, and you can use whatever color you want, but I'm going for a very neutral look for these pumpkins. And then I'm just going to rip off some fabric, cut it down to size, and tie that on as a knot. Hey, and if you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up. It really does mean a lot to me. It helps out my channel, and it helps this video be seen out there on the YouTube algorithm, and it helps other viewers find it. Then the last thing we need to do is just add this bead garland, and it's ready to be displayed in your home. For this project, we are going to be taking these little buckets or potting pots from the Dollar Tree. They had these around springtime, and I've been holding on to them, and I thought I could turn this into something really cool. So we are going to make a mini urn that you would see out in the front of a porch. I thought this would be so cool. So we're using some E6000 and some hot glue, and together these make the cutest little urn, and we're going to make it look more like a cement or concrete urn. I thought that would be really pretty to do that. So once those are all glued together and they're nice and set and hard, then we're gonna take some white paint and come in and give it a quick coat of white paint. Now I did this because I wanted to allow this wood filler, this putty that you can get from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to give it something to bond to, to hold it nice and together. And I went all over the whole thing, creating a lot of depth and texture. This is what's gonna make it look like like it's cement or concrete where it's a nice beautiful texture on it. Then we're going to come in with a bunch of different tones of gray until we get the desired look that we want. You're going to add in some darker, some lighter, and then at the very end you're going to bring in the last which is white and you're going to lightly dry brush all over it. Once that's all done, I sealed it with some Mod Podge to make sure nothing chipped over time and it stayed nice and strong and sturdy looking like it's concrete. And then I'm going to come in and add my piece of foam push it down into place and add some hot glue. This is going to allow it to stay in place if it ever gets knocked over and things don't fall apart. I like my stuff to just be nice and sturdy whenever I make things. Now I'm gonna take that really whimsical, dainty flower that they have at the Dollar Tree. I stuck that in first and then I'm adding in this really pretty leaf pumpkin option they had at the Dollar Tree this year. I loved these, I thought they were so cute and when you cluster them together they look like a mini tree. I thought this was so fun because when I brought all of them together at the base and wrapped it with twine that became the look of a trunk and all together it just looks like a mini tree inside of this urn which is so cute to put on a table somewhere in your home. So Make sure you wrap your twine nice and tight, and then at the bottom, make sure you add some glue so everything holds into place. And then you're gonna take some of this moss that they have, and you're gonna just add in some hot glue and keep massaging it in. Make sure you use a popsicle stick so that you don't burn your fingers. That's what I like to do whenever I get into tricky parts so I don't hurt myself. 
and you're just going to keep massaging it into place so that you get it nice and packed in and then you're ready to put it out for decor. For this home decor craft, we are going to be using this thrifted tray that I found at the Goodwill. I ended up getting it for 99 cents. Now I know a lot of people were looking past this because it looks like they put a double tag on it to mark it down and people just, I mean just add some paint. <laughs> I loved this beautiful lace punched out metal decor around it and knew that this could be turned into something so special. So we're going to start with black paint first. And I'm going to spray all over this part of the tray. Then I'm going to make sure that it's really dry because before we put down the tape, we want to make sure we're not going to peel up any old paint. So really let it dry. And now I'm adding on some eyes, a nose, and I'm also going to add on a smile because I'm going to turn this into a really adorable pumpkin tray. If you didn't know, my birthday is on Halloween. While I do not do the creepy ghoulish side of Halloween, I do like a friendly pumpkin face in my home. And so I'm going to just draw out this smile on some pieces of painter's tape and then I'm going to cut that out and place that down. Now remember, you could also do your monogram that could be really beautiful or any shape that you would want to. Once you've got your tape down, you're going to go ahead and spray on with the color that you want. And I'm going to go with this really pretty pumpkin color. And I'm just going to put on a couple coats, making sure that there's no drips. You want to make sure you're going back and forth with very thin coats. I think I did about four coats to really get that look. Then when I was done, I went ahead and peeled back the tape. And at this point, it's going to start revealing our pumpkin face, which I think is just so adorable. I love this tray and it's something I'm going to keep for so long. For this DIY, I'm going to be using this thrifted cup that's metal. I think it was probably a bathroom cup, but we're going to turn it into something completely different. And I did not pay $2.99. I think I ended up getting this half off. So now I'm going to take some puffy paints and I'm going to just draw these six lines crossing over each other. And then I'm going to come in with a spider web. I'm webbing between all of those joints, just swooping down. I will say I don't think the puffy paint at the DT is that great. I actually use and like the puffy paint at Michael's or Joann's a lot better. Once it was completely dry, I went ahead and sprayed it with two coats of black spray paint, making sure that all the spots were sprayed nice and thick. And you can see that the pattern on the cup turns out so cool. Now I'm going to shove some foam and glue it all into place down into this cup. And I'm going to take some of these branches from outside that fell off of our tree during a recent storm, hot glue those down into place. And then I'm going to come in with some green moss. I'm going to just keep hot gluing and playing with it until I get it to my desired look. And then I decided it needed still a little bit more of something. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple of rocks, making sure that it looked like a little old garden. I just think this turned out so cute. And again, I don't like creepy stuff but I thought that this was just the right amount of a touch of Halloween or fall time when the leaves fall off the tree. You can always ditch the spider web and just do the branches.
For this project, we are going to be taking this super popular witch form hat. I have seen many people trying to find these and I've seen a lot of friends also using them and turning them into hats. But we're going to turn ours into a cornucopia flower front door decor piece. Or it could also be like a bundle of flowers, however you want to look at it. But we are going to take it and cut it apart. We're going to take off the rim of the hat. We don't need that part. And then it's going to want to break right here on this piece. If it does, it's not a big deal. You're going to just take some twine, glue it, and wrap it around until it holds those two pieces together. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be covered up by the burlap, which we're going to be using next. So now at this point, go ahead and take out your burlap and you're going to just start gluing it around to create that cornucopia look. And the cool thing about this wire, you can also bend it and shape it and twist it however you want to make it look where it's more of a curved look. I just kept mine straight. So this is why I'm saying that maybe it looks like a bundle of flowers too for the fall time. It's just whatever <laughs> your preference is and what you think. But I was going for a cornucopia. I like how it turns out. I'm gonna take this really pretty mesh brown color and I wrapped it all around to give it that woodsy look on it. This part is so quick, so fast to create it. This project seriously took me maybe like less than 10 minutes to do and it's so beautiful at the end to put out on your front door or somewhere in your house if you want to hang it up. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to stuff it with the florals that we like. So many pretty florals this year and I had so much fun mixing and matching all of these different colors, bringing them all together to create a really soft farmhouse look to my florals. I didn't want anything harsh in here. I wanted it to look like we would see natural fall colors out there where it was a lot of creamy brown tones and some ivories. And I'm just bringing it all together until I get the look that I want in my florals, making sure that I cut apart the flowers versus trying to just stick the whole thing in as a unit where you see that plastic stem. You can actually see one over to the right by my twine. I don't ever like putting them in like that. I like to separate them. Then we're gonna take that really cute burlap bow that they had where it's got this pattern on it and we're going to just glue down the first one and then on the second one we're going to cut off the tails and we're going to add that right onto the bow to make it look more full and then we're going to bring on the two tails and glue those into place to make a really pretty bow to complete the look. This DIY, we're gonna take different size old food cans, paint them all orange, and then I'm gonna drill a hole in the very top of my cans. You can skip that part. You could always just add some glue and some E6000 to it, but I really wanted to make sure that these tops did not pop off. I have just learned over time that they really do if you just add only glue. So I like to drill a hole to get that down in there and then it really holds it on there and I can even pick it up by the stem without having any problems at all. Now I'm gonna add some more hot glue down into the bottom of the can and after that, touch up any parts where the glue is showing so that it looks nice and orange and just like a little pumpkin. Now I'm gonna take a whole bunch of random different pieces of twine, wire, and ribbons. I'm gonna tie that onto the bases of my little tree branches and then I'm going to just play with them, curl them, do all kinds of fun, cute little things to them to add all that texture on top to make it look like a vine. I love this part. I think this part turns out so cute and it really adds so much to these little pumpkins. So just play with them. You could even put a bow or whatever you want and you can see here that right now I'm curling up that wire because it makes it look like the little curly vines on a pumpkin if you've ever grown pumpkins yourself. Leave a comment down below to let me know if you've ever grown some pumpkins. And then the last, I'm just going to sand down these cans and it's ready to be displayed as a trio and I think they're so cute.
This project is so easy. Now I know a lot of us picked these up when these were first brought out. So I don't know if it's an item they're carrying all the time, but I picked it up knowing that this jar could be turned into a cute pumpkin fall Halloween look and you can do whatever colors you want. I decided to go with white on mine but it could also be really cute if you painted it orange as well and I'm just going to go in with a couple coats of my paint color that I desire and just follow along that line and once it's dry I'm going to sketch on the face that I want a nice happy pumpkin and once I've got all of my lines all in place ready to go i'm going to come back in with an angled brush and i'm going to paint in the eyes and the smile and you could add a nose if you want i decided not to add a nose i don't know why i just liked him more without him having a nose on it and i thought that this was so sweet and just take your time on your corners if you make a mistake it's not a big deal you can always just touch it back up again because we're working with paint always let it dry if you want to do a touch up let it dry first really well and then go back in and touch up any lines you might have accidentally gone over then at the top to give it some more detail so it's not so plain i added some twine and then little pieces of fabric cut into triangles to make a banner across the top i thought this was a very sweet whimsical touch to put at the top of this mason jar pumpkin and then to finish the look i added on a couple of twine bows on the sides to make it look so whimsical and fun That is it for my nine projects today. I hope you felt inspired with these autumn themed decor ideas. Remember to grab that fall freebie that's linked down below that will go to my website. And I'm going to recommend a couple of videos here for you to check them out that are similar to this video. Thanks so much for stopping by and until the next episode, bye friends.